Ladies and gentlemen, uh, very good morning to you all, and thank you very much for coming. Um, as uh, Samar mentioned, Carsten Fink is here, our chief economist, and down uh, at the back of the room is uh, Mr. Masaid Khan, who is who works under Carsten Fink as the head of our statistics uh, area. And uh, let me say that they've both done a fantastic job with this report. You've no idea how much work goes into uh, compiling all these statistics from so many countries around the world. And we've tried to facilitate its digestion for you by, uh, in particular, giving uh, you some um, infographics which are available at the, at the end of the room which uh, record very simply the overall numbers uh, for patents, trademarks and industrial designs. There is, of course, the press release uh, and I will give you a couple of details of trends, if I may, uh, sticking to the trends, and, uh, uh, and I'll try not to get too much into the numbers, but of course the trends have to be supported by the numbers, so uh, I am sorry to have to make some reference to numbers. Uh, okay, so as far as trends are concerned, I would say uh, that the first major trend is uh, the strength of the demand that one sees for uh, in intellectual property titles. And we cover in this report patents, utility models, trademarks, industrial designs, and plant variety rights. So if anyone wants any explanation as to the difference or what each is for, I'm very happy to provide it or Carsten can provide it. But it's patents and utility models which are in for inventions really, trademarks for image, reputation, uh, brands, uh, industrial designs, the external appearance of objects, and um, plant variety rights, which are uh, extremely important, uh, but rather unknown form of intellectual property protection, uh, which covers uh, um, uh, the, all the activity of traditional breeders, plant breeders, uh, okay, so the strength of uh, demand is the first thing. What we notice is that in 2012, and that's what we're speaking about, the year 2012, uh, we see patent filings grow by 9.2% over the preceding year, uh, industrial designs growing by 17%, utility models growing by 23.4%, and trademark uh, uh, class counts growing by 6%. So all of those uh, percentages are, of course, well in excess of the rate of growth worldwide of the global economy, and well in excess, I'd say, of most economies' individual performance uh, in terms of growth as well. Uh, one word of explanation in respect of the way in which we count trademark and uh, industrial design applications. Uh, let me give you an illustration. In the case of a trademark, you might register it for one class of goods, uh, for example, cars, uh, but you might extend it to other classes of goods, for example, uh, design in certain other areas. I'm thinking of Porsche as an example. Uh, and so you have within one application in many countries, several classes of goods that are covered. But some countries permit you only to cover one class per application. So you have to file multiple applications to cover multiple classes. Uh, that being the case, in order to ensure comparability, we are counting applications for classes. And the same thing for industrial designs. Uh, and gives you just a better way of comparing uh, different countries' performances. So the first thing, first trend I would say is, you know, the strength, the continuing strength of uh, the demand worldwide for intellectual property protection, which is an expression, of course, of the knowledge economy, of the fact that competitive advantage comes from innovation uh, and the capturing of that competitive advantage and the economic value of innovation by uh, intellectual uh, property. Uh, second trend, uh, I suppose, uh, that I'd like to uh, mention to you 
is uh, again, and we've spoken of this uh, repeatedly in previous years, you know, the extent to which China features as just a, a major uh, player in the world of intellectual property these days. Uh, when you look at um, patents for a start, uh, well, no, looking at all of the areas, China is the only office amongst the top five that recorded double-digit growth for each of the four types of intellectual property mentioned by us, namely uh, patents, trademarks, industrial designs, and utility models. I'm not including tra uh, plant varieties in that. So China's the only of the, one of the major offices that recorded double-digit growth in each area, uh, first of all. Uh, secondly, uh, residents of China filed the largest number of applications. So Chinese residents filed uh, 560,000 patent applications compared to looking at residents of Japan, 480,000. I'm giving you round figures. And the United States of America, 460,000. So there's another you know, indication. Um, the Chinese, uh, they, they also uh, uh, filed the largest number of patent applications throughout the world as well uh, for the first time in 2012. Uh, as an office, and here you deal with not just resident filings but also with non-resident filings, as an office, it also received the largest number of patent applications uh, worldwide. Uh, and there the figures, I don't want to get too much into figures, but the figures are 652,000 uh, compared to 540,000 for the uh, U USPTO and 342,000 for the JPO. Uh, so that, I'd say, is an, um, another uh, significant trend, is just, just the strength uh, of the demand in particular coming from China, and I've given you the pattern figures, but um, if you looked at industrial designs, for example, you would see that uh, China, uh, you know, received so f by in excess, so far in excess of every other country uh, in terms of numbers of applications, and it experienced a growth rate of 26%. Uh, third trend is that we see uh, uh, good growth rates from a number of middle-income countries. Uh, so uh, if you look across the world, you see that the majority of patent filings occurred at the IP offices of high-income countries, okay? That's 65% of patent filings occurred at... Uh, the patent offices of high-income countries. But in contrast, middle and low-income countries accounted for the majority of trademark filing activity and the majority of industrial design filing activity. So middle and low-income countries accounted for 52%, 53% of trademark filings, and 64% of design filings. Uh, and over the last five years, we see that all four types that I mentioned, uh, leave, that's leaving out plant varieties, so it's patents, utility models, trademarks, designs, all four types saw a shift in farming activity from high income to middle income. Much of that driven by China. Uh, but there are other good examples of growth in middle income uh, countries, and let me give you just a couple by way of example only. Um, in terms of trademark applications, uh, Turkey rose by 24.1% in 2012. Uh, in terms of industrial designs, Turkey also rose by 12.4%. In terms of um, uh, Industrial designs also, uh, the Russian Federation experienced a 30% growth rate. 
Uh, this, so they're just some random examples. Um, I w think that I will leave my opening remarks at that point. Obviously, there's a lot of numbers here. Uh, perhaps one word on plant varieties, because we, we generally don't pay much attention to it. The largest number of, of plant variety applications originated in, guess which country? Flowers, flowers, the Netherlands, the Netherlands, with 2,560, followed by the United States and then China. Um, we don't usually speak about that, but anyway, I will uh, leave my remarks at that stage, uh, point, and um, Carsten, did you want to add? Maybe just very briefly, thank you, Director General. Um, just to clarify, we collect uh, these data from intellectual property offices throughout uh, the world. Uh, always uh, uh, the data that uh, we publish is for the previous year. So this is our 2013 report that uh, publishes uh, data. The latest available data um, are for 2012. I should say that um, you know, in order to sort of not confuse things, uh, last year when we um, um, published our 2012 report for um, data concerning 2011, we reported that China, for the first time, um, the Chinese Patent Office uh, received more applications uh, than any other patent office in the world. So in 2011, China overtook the United States Patent and Trademark Office uh, as the largest uh, office in the world. Um, today, we are reporting that in 2012, China also became um, the largest filer in terms of Chinese residents uh, filing all over the world. Uh, so uh, this is, you know, just to make clear what um, is different that we are reporting today compared to, to, to a year ago. Also, um, as the Director General mentioned, uh, we, have, we, we saw um, fast growth in patent filings worldwide in 2012. In fact, uh, uh, it was, uh, the, uh, the growth rate was 9.2%, and you know, that was the fastest growth uh, that uh, we've seen in, in 18 years. Uh, a lot of that driven by China. China, uh, as I mentioned in, in 2011, was already the largest uh, um, patent office in the world, and uh, it further extended its lead. It's, it saw growth uh, by um, more than 20% uh, in the case uh, of patent filings. I should say also, though, and you know, I think this is um, 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 I think, uh, quite important, that we also see um, um, significant growth in the United States. Uh, at, at the United States Patent and Trademark Office, uh, both from U.S. residents uh, as well as uh, non-residents. Uh, and this is in contrast uh, to um, most European countries, uh, which really have seen quite a mixed performance, uh, and in some cases uh, have, have even seen a uh, marked decline. So in broad terms, it you know, clearly corresponds to, I would say, you know, overall economic developments. Uh, Although I think in the United States, uh, the growth rate uh, that we saw in 2012 uh, is also much faster than, than the growth rate um, of, of gross domestic uh, product. Um, but let me leave it there uh, if there are any questions. Uh. Yes. Yeah, thanks, uh, Ed uh, Girardet. Um, two, two questions. One, uh, the reason behind, I mean, do you have any comment on why China and also, the United States have far more patents uh, this year and in recent years. Is this a mark of more imagination? Uh, are the Europeans slipping behind? And my second question is um, re with regard to plants. I mean, I assume Holland is really patenting all the, the tulips and so on. <laughs> but what, what about indigenous plant species? Have you got any information on that with, say, you know, pharmaceutical companies trying to patent uh, an indigenous um, uh, species? So on the first, uh, look, I think there are multiple explanations. Uh, as a generalization, a broad generalization, uh, patent applications tend to track economic performance as a broad generalization. Uh, and so that's part of the explanation for uh, the trends that Carsten uh, just uh, gave. 
more specifically, of course, China is still in very much in a development mode. Uh, it, is, it is still developing its uh, expertise in this area. So with enormous investment in research and development, it's the second largest investor in research and development in absolute terms in the world, uh, enormous investment in education, and these investments in, in uh, knowledge infrastructure, if you like, are also being reflected in, in the take up that we see in the, in the uh, use of the intellectual property system as well. For the United States of America, it's always been uh, you know, the, the uh, predominant performer in science and technology for, uh, since I suppose the Second World War, uh, but I can't give you an exact date, but uh, it, it is a predominant for, uh, uh, performer. It's the largest investor in research and development worldwide, of course, not in, in, uh, in, in absolute terms, not in percentage of GDP, but uh, still a very significant percentage of GDP. Uh, and of course, an extremely well-developed uh, innovation ecosystem. So I think the, the, these explanations are reasonably, they're multi multiple explanations, but reasonably uh, straightforward to see. In the case of Europe, I suppose it reflects the, the fact that economic performance has not yet really picked up, uh, at least as not to the extent to which it seems to have picked up in the United States of America. As far as the second part of your question is concerned, plant variety, uh, and Carsten may wish to add to the first part, but the second part, plant variety protection, covers traditional breeding techniques. So it's selection uh, of the, the best characteristics in the phenotype, the external appearance of the plant, uh, and uh, concentration of breeding with tho those particular characteristics to arrive at eventually a new variety. What you get uh, more with the biotech pharmaceutical companies is uh, a, a scientific intervention on the plant in terms of genetic engineering and genetic ma manipulation. And that would be expressed more in terms of patent applications than plant variety applications which tend to cover the traditional uh, breeding techniques that have been practiced by humans for uh, thousands of years actually and that's one of the reasons why you also see a very strong participation in the plant breeders system the plant variety system by developing countries Carsten did you want to no, thank you. Katrin? sorry Uh, I've got um, two or three questions. So the first one is <clears throat> there was a, a problem of patent log. Uh, that it, it's a, an ongoing problem. Do you have data in, in this report about patent log? And is, for example, China experiencing the same problem as, for example, the USPTO has, uh, has experienced in, over the last years? Uh, is, this is about filing. Does that mean, uh, is there, uh, are there any data on granting? Is that uh, the, the number of filing application compared to the granting? And also this inflation of, uh, of application, does this mean that there will be a problem of quality of patents? Uh, well, there are a couple of, uh, I'll start and Carsten will finish, uh, what I don't cover, but um, Look, I wouldn't call it so much as inflation. I think inflation's slight, uh, uh, it's not the word that I would choose. I strong demand, sure. Um, why? Well, I think, you know, obviously knowledge is a much more important component in, in production than it used to be. And, and uh, we have, ex you know, if you just compare the economy now to the way it was in the year 1900, for example, obviously, uh, the major difference is the influence and, and, and pervasion of technology uh, and knowledge, the knowledge input to production. So a lot of that is coming out of uh, uh, this, plus a, a heightened awareness of, of the value of innovation uh, and its competitive advantage, what it can confer, um, and its contribution to economic growth. So I think that to some extent the demand uh, surge is able to be explained by uh, the, the way in which the economy has developed. Will the numbers 
lead to um, a reduced quality in application. Well, I think that is a legitimate apprehension that all uh, patent offices share, actually. Uh, and the management of demand is a major, I think, challenge for uh, patent offices worldwide and for WIPO. There are multiple tools that can be applied to uh, deal with, to manage demand. The PCT is one such tool. Uh, improved cooperation amongst patent offices is another tool, uh, and that is expressed, for example, in the platform that WIPO has put together called WIPO CASE, which is Centralised Access to Search and Examination Results, which was started originally with Australia, the United Kingdom and Canada, uh, but which Japan is in the process of, of uh, uh, monitoring a connection for at the moment, mm -hmm. and which China has just signed on to, uh, to be able to join in, and where Singapore is also joining in. So that's uh, as just one example of a tool or a platform that can help manage demand. I think everyone's very conscious of the need for good metrics of what constitutes quality in the patent area, uh, and a lot of work is going on by the economists. Uh, we don't necessarily have answers just yet. Carsten? Uh, thank you. Um, just a few words on, on uh, backlogs and grants, uh, what you asked about. Um, you would find quite detailed number on uh, so-called uh, pending patent applications in the report, which uh, in some sense give you a sense of uh, the number of unprocessed patent uh, uh, applications. Uh, and um, I think there we, um, I would say, uh, report moderately good news in a sense that um, at uh, three of the top four offices, uh, we saw a decrease in the oral, overall number of, of pending uh, patent applications. We saw decreases in the case um, of, um, uh, of, of Japan, of the, in the case of Japan, the United States, and the Republic of Korea. Uh, but we still saw an increase in the case uh, of the European Patent Office. Uh, and, you know, this is all, uh, when I talk about the top four offices, this is now the top four offices in terms of uh, number of, of, of patents in force and not in terms of annual number of patents received, um, where um, China is, 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 is clearly um, the top uh, office. Um, uh, I should say that I think, in, 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 I think especially in the United States, I think in the case of Japan, one of the reasons you see a decrease in the number of pending patent applications has to do with a um, um, sort of slowing growth in new filings. Uh, and in fact, if you look at the trend over the last six or seven years, I think you know, there even has, has been a slight decline. So that has also meant that you know, the workload that the office has faced uh, has become smaller. I think in the United States, um, it has a lot to do with uh, investments uh, that uh, the United States uh, Patent and Trademark Office has undertaken to manage its workload as well as you know, policies uh, to sort of uh, um, um, you know, more effectively um, process patent applications. As far as patent grants are concerned, um, again, you would find uh, all the detailed numbers uh, in the report. We always tend to focus on applications because um, patent grants are largely sort of an outcome of, of office actions. And in particular, if you look at patent grant data for a particular year, you would find that you know, these granted patents have been filed uh, at, uh, at, at different years, you know, and that could go back uh, to up to 10 years. So it's difficult uh, to sort of associate patent grant data with, uh, let's say, um, innovation trends or, or the economic uh, cycles because they largely sort of reflect an outcome of, of, of office uh, decisions. Uh, the headline number is that for the first time in 2012, the total number of patent grants uh, exceeded uh, 1 million. Um, um, growth was 13.7% um, um, uh, on 2011, and, um, and that was mainly due to growth in grants uh, issued by the Japan Patent Office, uh, by the Chinese Patent Office, and, and, and the United States uh, Patent and Trademark Office. Thank you. Um, quick question. Um, Carson, as you mentioned uh, China being the biggest filer in the world, I think. Wh where can we find this, this number and whether we can have like a, um, I don't know, the 
10 uh, largest filers in the world, not only in, not only in a particular country. And um, Mr. Guru, still on uh, the emerging countries, um, some years ago we were talking about um, uh, counterfeiting, uh, piracy, etc. Now we are talking about how the same countries are doing, uh, are using patents. Are they pat uh, the, the patents are on innovation or on copies? While Carsten is casting about, let me refer to these two uh, pages, and this will give you half of your answer, not the complete part. And if you look at the bottom of patents growth, right, and you see SIPO, you see top five offices, okay, SIPO is China, it's State Intellectual Property Office. And if you go to the bottom of the trademarks, you see the same thing again, SIPO, plus 16.5%. It's, and then if you go on to industrial designs, you see same thing again, uh, SIPO in green. Uh, so that's number of applications that they received. Uh, a different question of yours, which was your real question, I think, is how many were filed by China, Carsten will, uh, by Chinese residents? And I've got those figures here, but Carsten will show you where you can find them. Yeah, very easy. It's on page 58 of the report. It's figure A.3.1.2. Um, it's called Equivalent Patent Applications for the Top 20 Origins. Uh, so there you would find uh, the top 20. And you see China being the number one, followed by Japan, the United States of America, Republic of Korea, Germany, France, United Kingdom, Switzerland, Russian Federation, and Netherlands. Uh, are, are the top 10. We can also, um, all of the data will soon be available on the web page, so you can, there's so many ways of looking at these data, and I know it's not easy to di digest, uh, but uh, you know, all the data are going to be public, and um, you know, we are happy to um, also compile the data in a way that it is useful for you. Uh, and on your other question, uh, it's, it's not really possible to say, you know, without a scientific analysis, uh, which necessarily would take a huge amount of time to look at the type of applications that are coming out uh, of the different em emerging countries and, and how they have, w what sort of results they're achieving. But I think you're right. What, uh, what we see in general, of course, with this greater participation and use of the, uh, in and use of the intellectual property system by the emerging countries is that a problem like counterfeiting or uh, a problem like piracy uh, also are becoming shared problems. Uh, they're becoming shared problems worldwide, whereas once we might have regard them, regarded them as north, problems of the North. I think now they are shared problems. Please. Wuchen of Xinhua News Agency. Uh, Mr. Director General, it's mentioned that uh, China focused the patent filings on material metallurgy technologies, while in contrast, uh, U.S. focused more on the computer and the medical technologies fields. Um, what does that indicate? And uh, are there any changes in recent years in terms of so in terms of uh, uh, China's focus on the filing fields? Uh, if I may, um, I think your question is, 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 is uh, based on uh, the um, statistics uh, that uh, we publish in the report on our so-called relative specialization index, uh, which uh, compares uh, how countries are doing in particular fields of technology in relative terms. And what that tries to do is to essentially make data um, uh, comparable across countries. Uh, and you, know, you would, for example, find it very difficult to compare, say, Luxembourg to China, because by sheer size, China files so many more patents uh, compared to Luxembourg. And for this reason, we have come up with this relative specialization index uh, that tries to sort of uh, capture the technological edge that uh, countries have in different areas of technology in relative terms. Um, and that's quite important. So while you, for example, would find that um, in the area of digital communication, uh, Finland, and 
probably not altogether too su surprising, comes out on, tops, on top. It's still the ca case that uh, Chinese residents file many more patents in the field of digital com communications uh, compared to, to Finland. Uh, so I think um, you know, that, uh, that has to be um, uh, kept in mind. Uh, as far as you know, um, countries' performance in these relative specialization indices are concerned, uh, again, I think you look at this, um, and, and you know, some are, are clearly not surprising. You, know, you would find India being strong in, in organic fine chemistry. You, know, you would find China doing well in digital communications, and you mentioned materials and metallurgy. Um, but I think part of the purpose is, you know, a bit of a journalistic uh, purpose here is that, you know, we compile these indices. We certainly don't know what's going on in every country, but, um, you know, you may find it interesting to write about this, uh, you know, with more insights on what may be behind these numbers. Um, coming back to the filings, how many of these are defensive filings by corporations? And you don't seem to, again, have the data on um, abuse of IP to compare with the filings. In other words, is the motivation basically a defensive element in a lot of these increases? Um, and is there a correlation between increases in filings and countries where there's a track record of a lot of uh, counterfeit? Well. I, I think that's a, a, it's a very difficult question to answer because, and it's very difficult to have that data because how do you judge what is a defensive filing as opposed to an offensive filing and how do you judge what is an abusive uh, filing? I mean, it's, it's, it's possible to do it sometimes in retrospect with respect to a particular category of uh, uh, application or with respect to a particular filer's behaviour. But take, if, if I may say, the example of patent trolls. You know, patent trolls or, if you like, pat patent assertion entities. Uh, the difficulty there is, you know, how do you define what a troll is or what a patent assertion entity is? Uh, what we know is that the a patent assertion entity's primary interest is on the exclusive right conferred by a patent and not on the underlying knowledge. So they tend not to be uh, working that knowledge in a productive manner in, in, in the economy, but tend to be focusing on making money out of the exclusive right by, through litigation. Now, if you want to define that, uh, you, how are you going to define that to exclude universities? Because universities, generally speaking, are interested more in the underlying knowledge and less in the exclusive right, they, they usually often you know, outsource that commercialization of the knowledge to someone else, but they're nevertheless taking rights in respect of the underlying knowledge. So we have a major definitional problem, I think, that we're grappling with, and you can see in the United States they're grappling with that uh, at the moment. There are multiple bills introduced into Congress. The White House is very active in looking at the whole question of patent assertion entities. And, and the professional and industrial organizations, associations are taking positions in relation to this. Uh, so I think we've got work to do before we can get a good definition that will enable us to be able to answer your questions prospectively as opposed to retrospectively looking at something that happened, you know, five years ago. But do we have some kind of, uh, some trends of uh, patent violations just to, to give a mirror image of where there's growth if there's also increase in uh, patent violations, if, they, if there's a, a, a correlation here? And in, I think some countries, the definition of what is counterfeit is different. It clashes between the countries. Uh, in some countries, it's only considered illegal if X number of items are pirated, whereas in another country, a single uh, a, a pirated product would be subject to litigation. In some uh, dynamic economies, there could be thousands before you're in breach of the law. Well, um, I mean, I can only say that uh, there is some information out there on the extent of patent litigation in different countries. Um, I know, for example, in the case of China, you would, uh, you would find information also on trends. Uh, 
Uh, we don't collect these data. You know, that's partly a matter of capacity, but it's also a matter of comparability um, 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 across uh, countries, and a matter of you know that in some countries you know these data clearly don't exist, and it's not always clear sort of who collects these data because often you know um, litigation sort of takes place at at the sub uh, federal. Um, uh, level, so that's 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 one challenge, and I think the other challenge is that uh, you know you would find some data on litigation, uh, but that's sort of only the tip of the iceberg as far as intellectual property disputes are concerned. Uh, you know there are a lot of disputes that are settled uh, before it actually comes to the litigation stage, and you know those really sort of escape statistical measurement uh, uh, simply because they don't leave any 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 public record. Um, if you want to, we can point you to, to some sources here and there, you know, that at least for, for some countries give you statistics uh, on, on, on patent litigation. You mentioned you're, you're not collecting or tracking any of these violations, but if I'm not mistaken, you're part of the uh, uh, initiative with the WHO and Interpol in the area of pharmaceuticals, are you not? Uh, which initiative? Uh, the cooperative arrangement between WHO, WIPO, and Interpol. Uh, in respect of what? Of pharmaceutical, quality of pharmaceuticals. That is to say we are participating in, in, uh, from an expert, in providing expert uh, uh, assistance, yes, but we're not running that one, yeah. Who is these days? Well, I think WHO's. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Just for a clarification, when you say that uh, for the first time China tops the ranking for the both sources and uh, the destination in four categories of IPs, it means that for the first time in each of the four a category, it becomes uh, the number one, and in the past already in some a category, it was already number one. Uh, no, uh, not quite. Um, what I meant to say was that uh, China was the only office of the top five who experienced double-digit growth in all areas of patents, utility models, trademarks, and designs. So that was one thing. But in addition, uh, I, I said that in 2012, for the first time, residents of China accounted for the largest number of patents filed around, patent applications filed around the world in the patent area. I think that's probably true of, China, of trademarks too. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. It's certainly in China, yes, <laughs> but also. worldwide, I think, yes, also. Maybe if I could expand, um, you know, again, there are two ways of looking at these data. You can either look at these data by, you know, by the office that receives these applications, or you can look at these data by residents who file IP rights on a worldwide basis. Yeah. Um, if you first look at um, you know, the data broken down by office, you would find that in 2011, China sort of took the top spot for all four forms of intellectual property, patents, utility models, industrial designs, and uh, trademarks. Uh, in the case of trademarks, I know that uh, China um, uh, took over the top spot in 2001, so it happened exactly a decade uh, before it happened in the case of patents. So as of 2011, mm -hmm. Um, China, you know, was the top, f or the, the Chinese um, um, intellectual property office, or one should be even more correct in saying there are actually two offices in China, one responsible for patents, uh, designs, and uh, utility models, and the other one uh, responsible for trademarks. Uh, but those offices, as of 2011, um, were really the, the, the offices receiving the greatest uh, um, amount of applications in the world. Um, in the case of uh, the data broken down by origin, um, that essentially, you know, for all four offices only happened in 2012. In the case of trademarks, um, it also happened earlier. I can't tell you exactly when, uh, but uh, we, can, we can certainly look that up. We have that uh, data. 
Um, but as of 2012, um, it happened in the case of patents, and you know, that's why we can now say um, it, um, it applies to all four forms of intellectual property. Uh, where is the stats on the trademarks in the report? Page 99. Got it. There's a table of contents, so starting uh, on page 1999, you would find those. Just to, if I can take advantage of this opportunity for making question to Director General about uh, the General Assembly that starts tomorrow, what are the sticking point of this uh, General Assembly and what is your prospect of uh, solving the problem uh, successfully? Well, I think the two main issues that are uh, under consideration are uh, the convocation of a a diplomatic conference to conclude the proposed design law treaty in June 2014 and the question of external offices. Now, uh, a, sub a, a not a subsidiary, but a consequential question has been the program and budget because both of those issues arise in the context of the program and budget. Uh, and so the program budget is a third issue, but I think if you solve the first two, you solve the program budget. Uh, how are we placed? Well, I think consult intensive consultations have been taking place over the last uh, two, and two to three weeks, uh, led on by, in the case of uh, external officers, by Ambassador uh, Kwok Fuk Seng uh, of Singapore, uh, and in the case of a design law treaty by Mr. Marcelo de la Nina of Brazil. Uh, and uh, they have, I think, done some extraordinarily good work. And both of those items have progressed, but have not yet been resolved. Okay, so they've, I think, good progress has been made, but uh, a resolution has not yet been uh, arrived at, but we uh, hope that that resolution will be reached uh, in the coming two or three, actually, days. Mm -hmm.